from the time the egg is ovaposited to when it hatches, about 100 hours. Um, so pretty quick, so about four days. It goes through several instars or life cycle stages as a grub. And uh, I would say by the time it hatches to the time it turns into that black charcoal gray prepupa, it can be about three, three and a half weeks, maybe four. It actually takes longer in the winter. You get bigger, fatter grubs if you're going to do this in a greenhouse. And they, they can actually take longer to mature. So it may take six or eight weeks. Uh, and they just get huge over winter if you're keeping it in like a hoop house setting. It has to be conditioned space. You can't just, it has to be uh, warm, probably above 65. Um, but uh, the life cycle, here in the south, you, you could get easily, if you force it, maybe five or seven generations of this. And, and you're not going to get discrete generations. You're going to have a lot of overlap. Each female can lay between 400 and 900 eggs, which it could be substantial. Let me pass this around because it is a great resource. Have everybody seen those political signs that during the election cycle that are basically corrugated plastic. This is a great thing to keep. So when you see the politician who lost, grab their sign and what you're going to do is you're going to cut it into basically one inch by four inch strips and then rubber band it into maybe a bunch of five or six. These are reusable. You could do this with cardboard and they're going to obviously decompose. But when you do it, make sure that the holes are on the long side. Don't put the holes over on the tippy sides and you only have like five holes total on the thing. You want it so that all the holes are on the long side. Um, this is going to be where the females lay eggs if you're trying to collect eggs. The reason is black soldier fly don't lay eggs on food scraps. They don't lay eggs on their waste. They lay eggs adjacent to the waste. So if you pro provide adjacency, you will uh, be able to capture eggs. So if you want to magnify your colony and you don't necessarily think that your colony is catching a lot of females or attracting them, then get a, get a jar, get anything that has the ability to hold something. Um, I take pet kibble because I have so much of it and I soak it uh, out in the warm sun for about a day. The, the odors from that seem to attract them very quickly. I take uh, a stack of that stuff that I passed around. I think it got passed around, right? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, I would just like rubber band it right here. Um, that's all you do. You can, you can get tens of thousands of eggs doing that. And it just ends up filling all the little cre crevices with eggs. And then you take that and just throw that thing right in there. That's fine. Now that's if you want to force your population. Also, obviously, throw it in there. Uh, you'll get insane amounts of grubs. But that's it. Um, you can also use uh, feed corn, you know, like from deer season. Take that and sour it for a couple days out in the warm sun always has to be moist. You need that moisture with the pet kibble, the moisture with the feed corn. Um, I've noticed hydrated leftover Mexican food really does amazing wonders for attracting black soldier fly. Don't know why. Overripe fruit too. Don't expect to attract them on things that you can't smell either. Okay? So, and it has to be uh, calorie rich. Okay, so don't go giving them celery and cilantro. You're not going to get gr big grubs. Give them poor American diets. Give it... Uh, Beans? Oh, yeah, they'll love that. They love anything with calories. Oh, my God. Basically, restaurant waste. Uh, coffee grounds, they will subsist on coffee grounds. Brewery waste is bio-converted uh, at less of a percentage, but it is very good as a source of black soldier fly um, base. Yeah, Tim? After you have a population already, or if you just put it up there and do it? They won't be attracted to brewery waste initially. It doesn't have as much of an odor. Coffee grounds, they will. But the original starter needs to be smelly. And I'm not talking putrid puke smelly. It just needs to be smelly. Don't, don't let it go anaerobic to the point where you have to hold your breath. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. You don't need to ruin your day. It just needs to sour a little bit like a fermentation. Um, I, I wish we had more knowledge on the actual aromatics that attract them. But the ones in pet kibble, because you know a lot of the pets eat with smell, they don't necessarily eat by taste, that seems to attract them really well. So whatever corporate entity 
engineered the smells for pet kibble somehow have figured out that it also works for black soldier flies. So I, I always start my units out with pet kibble because it's cheap and easy and I have so much of it. But deer corn from leftover from deer season works well too. I have the regular cardboard I can show you. These are what I use um, when I'm just sitting idle, which isn't too often. I just, those are what I use for my research. When I fill that, when that thing gets about a third to a half full with eggs, and you remember, it, it, they're going to hatch out pretty quick in about 100 hours, and I usually toss it in. If you, if you wait to toss, you're going to have all the grubs start in here, so just take that and dump it out. And you can use mason jars, you can just use whatever. Just don't buy new, just reuse something. The plastic yeah. political signs, yeah. do they, the eggs, when they hatch or drop out, they self-clean? Or, I mean, you said they're reusable, do you have to clean them? Yeah, I soak them. I have like um, different types of mixtures on my farm that I soak pots that I reuse. I just throw them in there and they seem, it seems to self-clean. It just, I, it falls apart. Uh, but uh, it's just sometimes I, I just like to reuse because I'm busy with other things and if you can reuse something, it's great. And that stuff really holds up, it's really durable. If you throw the cardboard in there, it tends to decompose. They don't eat cardboard, by the way. The species does not have the digestive enzymes to break down lignin and hemicellulose. It will break down a lot of foods. It just won't break down woody stuff. So don't go putting branches in there, don't go putting leaves, cardboard, paper, it's not gonna eat them. The microbes that are symbiotically associated with them are probably gonna do a bang up job breaking that down, but not the black soldier fly. Um, there's very little thing, there's very few things that actually can break cell, um, lignin down, uh, mostly are fungi. Termites. Uh, yeah, termites, but it's not the termites, it's the microbes in their digestive tract, so. Yeah, Bob. I have never read or heard what the overwintering stage is of black soldier fly. Is it a grub in the ground? Um, the, the adults die. Uh, you know, the, have you seen the black ma uh, mature prepupa? That one. Okay. It could be the instar before. Maybe it's not done feeding. But I, I, I've only seen the black one. In the soil. They're in the soil. If you're ever a gardener, you'll actually o occasionally come across them. They just bore down a little bit and they'll hatch out in the spring. Um, the good thing about um, the ovarine winter grubs versus the grubs that you're seeing all summer long is the overwintering grubs, remember how I said if you're growing these in the winter, the life cycle's changed? Well, that life cycle lengthening that becomes more volatile and less regimen is because they want a diversity of hatching times in the spring so that you could take advantage of all the different foodstuffs and the different erratic weather climate patterns. So it's, it's in their best interest to not all hatch out at once like cicada, you know, but instead they hatch out at different times, and that's... I've noticed unique about the ones that overwinter, but I've only seen the black prepupa overwinter. Now, the black prepupa are the ones that crawl off. They're the ones that don't have mouth parts anymore. So they don't feed anymore. They just are going to be the, the repository for energy while it metamorphoses. That's all it is. But maybe the pupa probably has some overwintering too. The, the one that moves that's black is the prepupa. The one that elongates and is no longer moving is the pupa. So that could overwinter too. Yeah, okay, Pat. So we had the blue homemade items. We had them outside. And we had them outside so it got good and cold, right, Rocco? I mean, it got plenty cold. You know, uh, and we figured they were done for the year. But then we were starting our trough in the greenhouse, which we'll show you. Um, and we just took the stuff from the blue things and dumped it in there. And boom, we had, we had, we had a harvest. So they went totally dormant as, as larva and then got into the thing, you know, and woke up and did their thing. So we didn't spend the whole winter, but it was probably January before, or it was January because I was going to Southern Sog when they, when they happened. So they, it was a they solid had, couple of weeks in the middle of winter. Yeah. yeah, they had deep cold and then got put in a warm place and they were right back. The, the larvae are much more resistant to cold weather. Even the younger generations can handle cold. They just sort of go into like an arrested development, almost like a hibernation. And then when it warms up, they just start active again. They're poikilotherms. They're cold-blooded, just like most insects. Actually, I don't think any insects are warm-blooded. But um, I know that uh, they are very dependent, their activity on temperature. I would not 
probably raise black shoulder fly in any environment below my pod. I would never really want the pod below 70. Um, 65, you're going to see basically um, like a dormancy. They just don't move around much. Um, in the winter, you will not see any adults, just like you don't see many insects at all in the winter. They just don't make a, they can't live through the cold. This species um, is also present in the tropics. So if you go down to Puerto Rico or you go to Hawaii, where our research facility is, and um, you can actually grow them year round outdoors, which is great. So it's really awesome. We have um, some wonderful people on Kauai that um, are distributors over there. And that, that's amazing that there's enough interest on that island to actually have a legitimate distributor. And they have interesting food stocks that they feed them. They feed them the berries outside the coffee, like um, the, the berry, the coffee berry. They feed them papayas um, and some other materials like um, fish offal. So all the fish that they fish, the, the innards, and it is just banging good stuff. So uh, they do have a little bit of problem with mongoose. We don't have that problem here. We, our biggest problem tends to be raccoons, um, which are a problem with other things too, not just black soldier fly.